Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia uh, is a rare lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma that is associated with the monoclonal IgM protein. And there have been a number of recent publications that emphasize the role of uh, therapy uh, and its effectiveness. The two largest uh, competing options facing a clinician with the newly diagnosed patients, rituximab bendamustine or the use of a BTK inhibitor, a Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitor. The East German Lymphoma Study Group reported recently that patients who were treated with rituximab and bendamustine had a median progression-free survival of 74 months. This was after only four to six cycles of bendamustine, the primary toxicity being myelosuppression. And what was interesting, therefore, is that these patients have a 66 to 68 month unmaintained treatment-free interval before they need to have treatment. The three BTK inhibitors, ibrutinib, xanubrutinib, uh, and acalbrutinib were all shown to be highly effective with comparable response rates to bendamustine, but they require continuous therapy because of the risk that there will be a flare and rapid recurrence of the IgM protein at the cessation of therapy. Two comparative trials actually were published that compared ibrutinib to the next generation BTK inhibitors, acalbrutinib and xanubrutinib. Although the response rates and the response depths do not appear to be higher with these second generation BTK inhibitors, some of the off-target effects appear to be much less, particularly atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation occurs in about 11% of patients receiving ibrutinib it's about 3% with the second generation BTK inhibitors. Therefore, by reducing the risk of atrial fibrillation, it obviates issues of rate control, ablation, long-term anticoagulation in this elderly population of patients. There was also a presentation on the role of rituximab maintenance in patients with the um, East German Lymphoma Study Group, they enrolled almost 500 patients and they were randomized to two years of rituximab maintenance versus no maintenance rituximab. This was in a bendamustine treated population. And at six years, they reported that the progression free survival and time to next therapy was not significantly different between the two arms. And so for this subset of Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, rituximab maintenance therapy is not recommended. I think it's important to know that there are a number of second line agents that are available in Waldenstrom's. Venetoclax appears to be a highly active agent in macroglobulinemia, and venetoclax is currently being studied as a single agent in macroglobulinemia and in combination with ibrutinib for macroglobulinemia. And so venetoclax is expected to have a very high response rate in macroglobulinemia and should be considered second-line therapy. Other options for patients with heavily pretreated macroglobulinemia include bortezomib and cyclophosphamide-based regimens. Autologous stem cell transplant continues to be done in Europe for the management of macroglobulinemia. And even though they're sparingly used, they're still highly effective, and that would the purine nucleoside analogs, fludarabine and cladribine can be very valuable in heavily pretreated patients with macroglobulinemia, as does bortezomib and carfilzomib, which also produce high response rates in macroglobulinemia, although note that bortezomib appears to produce a higher risk of peripheral neuropathy in the Waldenstrom population.